Hey what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode in my Football Manager series, this is episode 53 and today we're returning with the season finale as we finish the Premier League season with games against Wolves and Everton both away from home where there is still a possibility Millwall could finish in the Europa League places. Before we play the games though, shall we all be getting on off camera? So of course in the last episode you saw, well, a bit of a massive choke to be honest, uh, back to back defeats first owned to Bournemouth uh, at the Den in the Premier League where we were leading and threw it away in the space of 90 seconds and then of course our defeat to Liverpool at Wembley in the FA Cup semi-final as well where once again we were leading but we threw it away. I've said it was typical Millwall, it wasn't really, it was typical Docks, seriously, what a massive choke at the end of the season and uh, something we've become accustomed to on this channel when I play Football Manager, but uh, I played two games of the final four in the Premier League off camera and sadly our bad streak continued. Uh, we took on Manchester United first away at Old Trafford where we were holding on to a point in this game in a clean sheet and it looked like we are going to get it as well. We set up in a 5-3-2. We were absorbing the pressure from the Red Devils, restricting them to long shots, doing really well but two goals in the final two minutes of normal time. Uh, first Richard and then Romelu Lukaku in stoppage time and two simple goals as well. First from a set piece and then the second one a simple long ball forward. Frustratingly saw us lose the game and notch up our third defeat on the trot, but the final game of Karen was a credible 1 1 draw at home to Arsenal where. You see the scorer on the right there for the Lions. Let me explain what happened at this moment. Oh, man, it was one of those moments where I just really wish I, uh, I was recording it on camera so you could have got my reaction. It was unbelievable. So basically, we won ourselves a penalty. Marek Kuchar got pushed in the box. And at the top of the screen, uh, when a player goes down and you get awarded a penalty, uh, you can change the play. You can change who opts to take the penalty uh, if, if not your regular penalty kick taker. So at the right on the bar, it would say change player. You have the option quickly to change to a different player. So I thought I would see who's our best penalty taker because normally I just let the, the players take, you know, whatever, whatever, whoever stands up takes it. But I thought I'd select to change the player and I accidentally selected Loon. I didn't mean to do it. I didn't think I did. I thought I clicked off it, but I clearly didn't. I selected Loon to take it and he smashed it into the top corner. I was going mental when this happened. I was like, oh no, no, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. Oh, he scored. It went right into the top corner. It's incredible. And like, it was just such an incredible penalty as well. I was thinking, not only did he score, score he smashed it right into the top corner so our goalkeeper Lunin gave us the lead for in the penalty spot I wish I could say that was intentional it definitely wasn't but uh, sadly in the 32nd minute Lunin couldn't keep out the shot from Pulisic as uh, Arsenal got back on the terms courtesy of the American and we played quite well in this game we hit the woodwork twice uh, had a couple of late chances one from Maori at the end we hit the woodwork as well hitting the crossbar from a header, but uh, sadly couldn't get the three points, and a draw was the best we could do, <laughs> so, oh, that Loonan penalty was unbelievable, I was just like, no, no, I didn't mean that, I didn't mean that, and then he scored, I was like, oh, wow, that was brilliant, what a penalty, but uh, anyway, uh, we drew the game, and that means that we had no wins in our last four now, just one point picked up from nine, and that means heading to the final two games today, against Wolves and Everton, both away from home, we slipped down to 10th place in the Premier League, and it's still possible with two games to go. He could finish in the Europa League place. Arsenal have done it now. But look at the cluster of teams from 6th to 10th. You've got five teams who are separated by just three points. It is so, so tight right now in the race to the Europa League places. Two teams are going to make it. Right now, Everton and Watford are in those places. But Spurs, Bournemouth and Millwall on the outside looking in aren't far behind one bit. It is so tight. And that's why there is still a possibility we could qualify for the Europa League. But we do have the worst possible chance being a point behind. And with just two games to go, both away from home, they're going to be very tricky indeed as we take on Wolves battling for uh, Premier League survival and uh, Everton battling to stay in the top six. So it, it's going to be tough. It's it's unlikely. We've got the worst possible chance of doing it, but you never know. Let's not give up yet. Come on, you Lions. So here we go then. Uh, first of the two games today is away against Molyneux. We'll keep our eyes today on some fixtures. Man City play Watford later at 5.30, but you can see Everton at home to Bournemouth. Here. What a big game that's going to be in the hunt for Europa League place today. And I'll keep a close eye on that one as we'll hopefully see Bournemouth and Everton drop points together and just have the draw. Who knows? But anyway, for our team for the game, we're going to go to the 4-2-3-1. We use this against Arsenal and we play quite well and let's hope we come good in this one and get ourselves the victory. So this will be our lineup for the game then. Lunin is in goal. It's about for a Timon, Jordan, Maori and James Bree. In midfield, Dobby and Cooley Barley. Attacking midfield trio being consistent all through the season. Louise on left, Webster on the right and middle O'Reilly. Supporting club captain Marek Kuchar. And on the bench, Pekovic Fryer, Ahumada, Kirk, Uma, Benk, and Enzo as well. So first game, it oh, let's, put, let's put the dream on the bench for Kirk instead. First game, it is indeed Wolves. We need a win to keep our Europa League dreams alive. 
Come on, you Lions. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention as well, which I'll get to after the game, is there is something very big that could potentially be happening behind the scenes of the den. Now, if you play football manager, you might be aware of what it's going to be, but there's uh, there's something quite big happening, and uh, I'll, I'll discuss it after the game. But as we come into this one, fully focused on the match, still 0-0, 20 minutes into the game, and I don't think draws at this stage of the season are going to do it, really. So Wolves are right now battling for Premier League survival. We're away at Molyneux. Big game for both clubs. We need to come through and get the win here. We cannot afford to fail to get the three points. Such a shame that we were doing so well. Ten games undefeated now, right at the end we've struggled to maintain that form as Marek Kuchar on the ball has a tame effort easily caught by Svila but I just I don't think that wins are I sorry, sorry, I don't think points are going to be enough now we, we need to get wins and, and three points in our final two games especially against Everton and at half time it's still nil nil now as things stand due to Spurs not playing today and with City to play uh, later um, against who is it is it it's not it's, it's Watford I think it's Watford um, right now we're actually moving into seventh place with Everton and Bournemouth tied at nil nil as well so at the moment this draw. Will, oh no, we're in eighth. Okay, never mind. Scratch what I was saying there. Okay, so we're still in eighth. So yeah, we, we need to get the wins. It, it's not enough to get the draw now. We, we've got to get the wins if we, have, if we have any chance of reaching the Europa League places. So 54 minutes in. So far, the only thing to report has been Marek's tame effort easily caught by Svila. But a corner here for the Lions 11 minutes after the restart. Louise chips it in. Headed clear though. And now the host could have a counter-attack with Caballero down the left-hand side on the ball. Looking to find a team. Back towards Jay De Silva. Wow, he's at Wolves already. We gave him to Stoke and now he's at Wolves. And that's a long ball forward. Should be cut out by Tymon. And it is. And we should get it back. If we lose this game, it's over. And the final game will mean nothing. We have to at least, at the very least, get a point to have any chance at Goodison Park of getting into Joe League places. But I feel a win is mandatory, really. So come on, you Lions. Let's get our first meaningful chance here. Clinton down the right-hand side. Has James on the overlap. Now he stops and Clinton takes it himself. Crosses. Marek is there. Oh, Heads it off target. Still 0-0. We've got to find a breakthrough. We need the win. A draw's not going to do it for us. And now Wolves have a chance here a couple minutes later. Van der Beek back to his man. Now receives it again. Now Ruse on the ball. Dispossessed. But it comes to a Shaloba who fires it just wide. I don't see this game finishing 0-0. Both teams know what's at stake. Both teams need a win. A draw means nothing for both sides here. They're both going at it. They both need the three points. Clinton down the right. Skins his man. Keeps on going. Crosses. Kuchar. Oh, easy save for Svila. And a golden chance goes begging. Come on, come on, come on. Keep the pressure on. James Bree to Matt O'Reilly. Down the right-hand side. Back to our right back. Into Cooley Barley. Finds O'Reilly. Dispossessed. And our Wolves get it away. I'm feeling quite pessimistic, as you can probably tell. But if we can win this game, we give ourselves a chance. That's all we can do. Dobby on the ball. Keeps hold of it. Back towards Cooley Barley. And in towards Dobby. The Romanian now keeps hold of it and finds Marek Kuchar. Slowly looking for a chance. Marek turns his man. Keeps on going. Falls back towards Cooley Barley. And we just can't break Wolves down at the moment. O'Reilly on the ball. Out to Webster. We're getting a joy down the right side. And Jay De Silva, who's on a booking, may well be off. And what a story this will be if Jay De Silva sends Wolves down to 10 men against his former club. And I think that's going to do it. That should be a second yellow card. And De Silva is off. Wow, what a drama at the end of the season. Right, now we've really got a go for it let's change our tactics up here let's go let's keep it on control actually but uh, let's much higher the tempo let's mix the passing around let's stop retaining possession let's be a bit more expressive if we can let's stop playing out of defense as well and let's let's try and get the ball forward a little bit quicker now so we'll we'll keep the overlap and work the ball into the box on for now we'll switch to attack and even though that doesn't really work for me that much but should we go to a 4-2-4? Now we've got the man advantage. I think we should. I think we should go for it. So Matt O'Reilly is going to be sacrificed here. We'll keep Dobby's deep line playmaker. And we'll bring on... Oh, do we go with Julian or Enzo? Enzo for the height or Julian the wonder kid? Uh, I'm, I'm going to go I'm, I'm going to go for Julian. I'm going to go for Julian up top alongside Marek. We'll have Marek playing as a complete forward support in. And Julian in the advanced forward role. And this is it now. If we fail to get the win now, 25 minutes to go, and fail to break the deadlock, this will end our Europa dreams massive chance here gotta take it as Benkers down the left off the bench crosses poor delivery and Shaloba gets it clear it's going to be Millwall putting walls on the ropes for the rest of the game now time across his Benker flicks on Webster denied by Svila come on we're going to overload now. We're pushing Marek down to play central midfield. And we're really going for it in our final four minutes. And it looks like we're going to miss the opportunity to win. As things stand, Everton are beating Bournemouth, which means that we will move into seventh. But this will be a huge missed opportunity with Wolves down to 10 men as well. If we fail to take it, there might be one late chance. Abdul Caddy to Julian, who crosses... 
and Svilar claims it pretty comfortably. Oh, man, oh, man. I can't believe this. We're, we're literally choking as worse as we possibly could right at the end of the season. This will be no wins in five out of the FA Cup in the semis. We, we've had such golden opportunities to make the Europa League, and instead, we're totally choking. Ruse on the ball, and if Wolves win it, I won't believe it. Koulibaly intercepts. Breed towards Webster. Down the right-hand side. Clinton. Enzo. Benka! Oh my goodness gracious me! What was that? So, last season, Christian Gutierrez, joint top scorer, sold him to Stuttgart, and I replaced him with Reddy and Aldo and Benka, who have missed absolute sitters at crucial moments at the end of the season. Talk about bad management. Oh, what a huge, huge missed opportunity. Now, we do get a point. I'll say I'm far from pleased with what I just saw from the team. All the players are fired up. And it does mean that due to Everton beating Bournemouth, we have jumped into seventh place, but only for now. Oh, my goodness. What a missed opportunity. Benko, what was that? Who am I going to play up front in the next game? John Black, maybe, at this point. But... Dear, oh dear, massive missed opportunity. We are into seventh due to Bournemouth losing to Everton. But Watford have a game in hand. Spurs have got a game in hand. And all those two teams need to do is get a point in the game in hand. And we'll drop back down into eighth and ninth place. That should have been a win. And we should be points clear. Not on goal difference. Massive missed opportunity. But as we do see here... We do enter the Europa League race, but only for now. Uh, this is what I wanted to show you guys. Uh, where are we here? It's somewhere. Where are we? Where are we? Have I missed it? Oh, there we are. Uh, consortium plans Lions takeover. English FA Cup semi-finalist Millwall could be taken over by a consortium of investments, possibly involving a former footballer. A, spokesp a spokesperson for the group has revealed it is within a few weeks of approaching chairman John Berrelson with an offer. Now, when this happens in FM... If the takeover does go through, sometimes you can lose your job as manager. So I thought I'd best show you that because that's a very, very, very big email. And it could have massive ramifications on the future. So, yeah, as if things can get worse towards the end of the season, we're bottling a Europa League place. And now I might lose my job as well. It's all going wrong. I'll quickly process the Manchester City versus Watford game as well. We need Manchester City to do us a favour at the Etihad Stadium, which they should do really as they're going for the title. But I can just see Watford nicking a point, and uh, that won't be good for us. But instead, Man City thrashed them by five goals to one. So at least got us a favour there. But Spurs play tomorrow, and they are... Who are Spurs against tomorrow? Let's find out. They are going to be against... Dun, 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 Norwich away at Carrow Road, which you'd expect them to win, which will put us back down to eighth place. So what we'll do is we'll process through together and hope the Canaries can do us a favour. But I'm very pessimistic. And, oh, if we would have won that game... Well, I'm not going to go on about it forever, but dear, oh dear, we've totally choked. We've absolutely, totally choked this right at the end. I say we've choked, I've choked. I should have kept Gutierrez. What was I thinking selling him, man? There was no need to do that. So we'll quickly process through. Come on, Norwich, do us a favour. Fingers crossed here. We need a result. We need a Canary seed and drop points. Oh, they've beaten them. They've beaten them. My Colton Hill Kavanagh, you absolute legend. Who is he? He's an attacking midfielder, a Welsh one. I'm signing this guy for next season. What a legend. He's kept us in the Europa League places with a game to spare. Norwich, you absolute beauties. We love you. Come on. And that mathematically confirms their safety. And it means heading into the final day. Oh my god, we're, we're in seventh. We're in seventh. We're still there. Just by the skin of our teeth on goal difference. Right, who plays who on the final day? Watford have got... Oh, it's the dream. Watford have got Spurs at home. I didn't even realise that. And we're taking on Everton away at Goodison Park as well. Now, we're not there yet. Because if we lose to Everton and that game finishes as... Actually, no, do you know what? Oh god, no. Actually, we... we right. How, wait, right, my mouse is terrible. What do we need here? Well, if we beat Everton, we do it, basically. Um, if, if Watford and Spurs draw, then we need to get a draw or a win. But if one of those teams wins, then we have to win as well. So actually, that's not great. I was thinking that was a good thing. It's not a good thing. It's a bad thing. Right, okay, well, we're there. We're there. Norwich have done us a massive favour. My, if we do this, it's like the worst way to qualify for Europe ever. This really is just embarrassing, isn't it? Like, if we pull this off, we scrape a Europa League place by the skin of our team, this will be officially the worst way a team has qualified for the Europa League ever. We had the chance in the FA Cup, we bottled it. We had the chance in the league, we're bottling it, yet we're somehow doing it as well, thanks to results going our way elsewhere. Who's been called, who's been called up for the European 
Championship. Wow, quite a few players here. Uh, Benka's going. Petkovic is going. Kuchar's going. Oh, Webster's made it. So is time. And so, oh, O'Reilly's made the England squad. That's fantastic. He's not got a cap yet. That's brilliant. Uh, Maori hasn't got a cap for Italy. He's going as well. Northern Ireland qualified. So Black is going. Dobby and the Cheetah are going for Romania. Jansen, I forgot we didn't have him. He's going with Sweden. Luna's going with Ukraine. And Henry's going with Wales as well. Going to keep an eye on that competition. We've got quite a few representatives there. And uh, we'll see how our boys get on. Anyway, Everton next at Goodison Park. And a win in this game sees us qualify for the Europa League. Come on, boys. Well, we definitely, obviously, want the Spurs game to finish as a draw. Because that means all we need to do is get a draw. We don't need to win on the final day. A draw will be enough. Unless, actually, think about it. Unless Bournemouth beat Southampton. Because if they win, and us, uh, Spurs, and, and Watford draw as well... Then, in in fact, Bournemouth will finish in Europa League. <laughs> this is mental. This is mental because, yeah, if we finish with a draw, that will give us 53. And if Spurs and Watford draw, that will 53. And if Bournemouth win, they'll have 55. So they will go into seventh. My goodness gracious me. There are four teams separated on goal difference heading into the final day of the Premier League with the final Europa League spot on the line. This is absolutely crazy. So let's just get into it then. To away at Goodison Park then for the final game of the Premier League season where we know a win will put us into the Europa League places. But that may well be what we need to do. Bournemouth away at Southampton, they've got nothing to play for. You'd expect Bournemouth to go at them and win that game. And I think one of Spurs or Watford will win at Vicarage Road as well. So I feel we need to win this game. I think we've got to be Everton. I don't think draws are going to do it. We've blown golden chances against Bournemouth, against Wolves. And now on the final day, if we blow it again, it's the biggest choke I think I've ever done in football manager history. We've had so many opportunities and we've blown every single one. Right, so for the tactics, do we stick with the 4-2-3 one, I think we should. We've played well with it for the majority of the season. We've not scored many goals, but it's, there's slight temptation to switch to 4 4 2. It never works on camera, and the 5 3 2 is a bit too defensive, I feel. So let's go with the 4 4 2, uh, 4 2 3 1, and uh, we'll make one or two changes to our lineup, I think. I'll keep the goalkeeper in the back four the same, but. We haven't scored that many goals, and I've got to say, I saw the name down there. John Black. I mean, he's got to be on the bench, right? He always comes good when we need him. He always scores when we need a goal. So we'll put Black on the bench for Abdul Kadi. We've got such a top-heavy bench. But again, I feel we need to win this game. And we're going to leave 75 grand a week ready now, though, in the reserves. I don't trust him. I don't trust him. So this is it, then. Final game of the season. Come on, you Lions. Let's qualify for the Europa League. So Lunin in goal. About for a time and Jordan, Maori and Bree with Dobby and Cooley Barley in the middle. Our attacking midfield trio remains the same. Louise on the left, Webster on the right, and in the middle, O'Reilly. Supporting club captain Marek Gucci. The goals have dried up for Marek. We need one here today. We need the three points. On the bench, Petkovic, Fry, Achelman of the Dream, Black, John Black, Benka, and Enzo as well. Come on, you Lions. Final game of the season. I'm quite pessimistic. We can still do this. I think we have to win. I don't think a point's going to do it. It's very, very unlikely that a point will do it. But having said that, I mean, you know, it, it was unlikely that we, we would have even be in this position an episode ago. Yet we are, despite not winning any of our final, our last three Premier League games. So, you know, you can't rule anything out this season. It's been unbelievable. But I just, I, I, I think we're going to have to win. I think we're going to have to win this game. I can't see Watford and Spurs drawing and Bournemouth failing to win as well. One of those three teams will get a win. So I think we have to as well. But the first highlight comes to Everton. And this will be the worst possible start to go in front. And instead we've got it clear as Louise clears it long but straight to Bird. That's a new gen slash region right back I've had my eye on. And the Toffees get it back. Eight minutes in. They've got very little to play for in this game. In fact, they've got nothing to play for. They're cemented in sixth, whereas it's everything on the line for the Lions today. Palmer's ball cut out by Maori. Born straight back by Shepelev. Out wide towards this right back who crosses. Sandro's onto it and heads it in. And it's the worst possible start. Eight minutes in. Already a goal down. We couldn't throw this away any worse than we're doing. God almighty. Seriously. Like, the amount of opportunities we've had towards the end of the season. Bournemouth. Wolves. Everton now on the final day. And we haven't lost to them in the entire series so far. And now it's Watford have gone one up on um, Spurs. That's it. It's over. I mean, there is absolutely no way we're doing it now. We have to win now. If one of Watford or Spurs win, then we have to win. So, we're behind. We're trailing. We're half an hour in. We've created nothing. It's over. And Bournemouth are in front as well. It's definitely over now. I'm sending Black on at the break. 
um, putting him on the pitch and, and, and seeing what he can do. But it's, it's game over. As Watford have now doubled their lead, that's definitely it. Dobby's corner flicked on by Maori just off target. And uh, yeah, there's, there's, I can't see Spurs coming back with two goals down now away from home. And that means that as we head into half time, I can't believe how badly we're choking this, man. But I should come to expect this. I should come to expect this. Like, seriously, I choke so many things on FM. And it's happening again. So, Bournemouth are in front of the Saints. Watford are tuning up on Spurs as well. And as things stand, we're dropping to ninth and totally choking it. God damn it. Oh, man. I so badly wanted one of two things this season. Either an FA Cup final place or a Europa League place. And in the end, we're going to end up with neither. I mean, it should be worth pointing out, it's only our third season in the Premier League. So we've actually made some really good progression pretty quickly based on how poor this team was when we started our campaign in the top flight. But either way, I so badly wanted one of those two things to happen. We had such great chances and we've totally blown it. Time and sent down left-hand side. Crosses, Moret can't get there. And O'Reilly shot saved by Pickford, but it's turned in by Moret. But I think the flag is going to go up for offside and it is... And that means that the goal is disallowed. So five minutes in, we see the, hit, the ball hit the back of the net, but it doesn't count. But a good start at least. At least we got the ball in the back of the net, despite it not being allowed. So still 1-0 and, and something to build on, perhaps. Michael Keane for Everton plays it through to Onyekiri. And Onyekiri down the right-hand side plays it across towards Birdie. Crosses easy claim for Lunin. Right, let's not throw in the towel. There's a positive there. Our first sight of goal in the game. We found it, but it was rightfully disallowed. There's there's plenty of time. No need to panic. Just got to keep our heads up here. As Hulkamar finds Guilherme and through to the goal scorer Sandro. But I should say, if Everton go two goals up, then there are no positives to dwell on because we're definitely not going to make the Europa League. Sandro miscontrols. Webster wins it back. He then loses it. And it's right back to the number nine. Into Casey Palmer. Across to his man. Now on your Curie finds a bit of space and finds a teammate as well who fires it off target. Everton are going for the kill. They don't want us in the Europa League places. 59 minutes in. Another chance here. We come out of the second half looking to get that goal early and find the equaliser which we so sorely need. Cooley Barley back towards Josh Tymon. Gives him straight back. Now into O'Reilly. Uh, Matt finds Louise down the left-hand side. Can he turn his man bird and get away? He can indeed. Now can he cross? He can indeed. And Marek Kuchar can find the back of the net. Right. Half an hour to go. And as things stand, it's not going to be enough. But one more goal and it will be. Brilliant work from Louise. What a season he's had in his debut year at the Den. And Marek Kuchar, the captain, finally gets a goal on the final day. Right. Everyone calm down. Take a deep breath. Half an hour to go. We still need another. It's a brilliant goal by Marek. It's 1-1. But it's not enough. We need another. Right, 22 minutes to go. I'm um, leaving things as they are because we've actually played quite well in this second half. But it's it's not going to be enough as things stand. So do we make an alteration now? Do we do we go to a 4-2-4 perhaps and, and really go for it? I mean, we may as well lose the game by chasing it, right? Because a draw at this stage is going to mean nothing since what for the two goals up. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take off Dobby on the booking for uh, for, uh, for O'Reilly. Switch those two around and take off Dobby for... Do we bring on John Black? Ben or Enzo? One of those three. Who do we go with? Um, Enzo's got the height in the air. Benk is the one. The kid Black is the old reliable. I'm, I'm going to go for Enzo. I think a different option up top alongside Marek. He'll be the target man. And perhaps he can help us get that winning goal. So 4-2-4. Four, four. really going for it now. We may as well. We may as well lose the game by chasing a winner. 13 minutes on the clock. Can we find a second goal that will put us in the Europa League? Well, Watford are now freeing it up on Spurs, so it's it's now or never. And it looks as though we're not going to get any more chances. Five minutes on the clock. I mean, we may as well just completely go for it now. Cooley Barley off. Uh, Benker's going to come on as well. We'll play him as a complete forward. Uh, I mean, what, 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 we've got one central midfielder on the pitch. <laughs> I've got no idea what this is supposed to be. We're going overload, which is basically get to full time on FM. We're taking off retain possession. We're going more direct, taking off play out defence as well. Uh, actually, we'll go, we'll go route one and pump the ball into the box as well. Stop looking for the overlap too. We'll go route one. Um, yeah, let, let's just go for it now. We, we, we've got to go for it now because a draw is basically a defeat now. Three minutes on the clock. Can we get one more chance? Can we get the goal? Four minutes of added time. And there is one more highlight. Enzo lost out in the air. Everton get it back. And with literally one central midfielder on the pitch, this should be an easy chance for Everton. They're giving it away. Bree. Enzo. Benka scores. Benka scores. Julian Benka scores. I don't believe it. Benka scores. It's 2-1. We've got in front. We've still got one central midfielder on him. It's 2-1. I've lost it. I've lost a plot for his I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Enzo, Kucha, 
sure. Ben Kerr, I'm sorry, I don't know what to say. It's too well. I think we've done it. But we need to make the changes now. I can't watch the replay anymore. What am I going to do? I don't know. Right, I never like pausing the game when I'm making changes. I don't think that's right. So we've got to make the change right now. Overload, contain. I don't even know what to do. I'm just leaving it. Central midfield, Kucha up. Come off for the dream. 4-2-4, push Webster and Louise back. The dream plays a ball in midfield. That's not your role. I don't care. I just confirm it. Just confirm it. Confirm it. Come on, get to the final whistle because this will do it. Loonin plays it long. Enzo loses out in the air. The dream flicks it back. Ref just blew the final whistle. I can't believe it. Benka, there it is. It's over. I don't believe it. We've actually done it. This is the most incredible way to end the season, and we've done it, Benker, in stoppage time. My goodness. Passionately, I've, I've lost my voice. I've lost it. That was really special, lads. Nobody gets a chance to play most of Congratulations. You've done brilliant to come back and win that. I'm proud of you. I, I'm, I've, I've lost it. I've totally lost it. We've, we've done it. So, final day results. I'm so sorry if that was loud. I'll quiet it down in the audio. But Watford beat Spurs by three goals, which means we had to win the game as Bournemouth drew with Southampton. And Benker's stoppage time winner puts us, uh, I should say, keeps us in seventh place. Manchester City are crowned champions. I'll go through the, the final league table in a moment. And that's it. We've qualified for the Europa League for the first time in the series. We'll go into the preliminary stages, which means we'll have to play, I think it's two qualifiers next season. But it's our first taste of European football in the series. And it's the most dramatic way to do it. I just threw literally everyone on. I had three strikers up there. O'Reilly was the only midfielder on the pitch. And we did it. Oh, the gamble paid off. I mean, we said we may as well lose the game by chasing it. So it wouldn't have mattered had we lost it in the end. But we've not got the Europa League uh, sign there. But we should do. Because the final is Liverpool versus Manchester United. And both of those boys qualify with the Champions League. So... It, it, I mean, we've seen a news article. We, we know it. We've qualified for the Europa League preliminary stage. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna dwell on that. But this is just like two years ago. I did my Swansea save. Very similar with Swansea. We, we scored like a last minute goal to send us into Europe. We've done the same at the Den, and it's an incredible way to end the season. So Manchester City crowned champions for the second straight year, beating Manchester United on goal difference. What a thrilling finish that must have been. And it seems like Man City are actually now the uh, the, the big boys in um, in in this save, not Manchester United like uh, in FM uh, 17. Uh, Manchester United second, Chelsea third, Liverpool fourth, that rounds up the top four. And the three Europa League places, Arsenal, Everton and Millwall on the final day with virtually the final kick of the season. Watford, Bournemouth and Spurs around us every step of the way. Fair play to those three. What a great season this was. And the bottom three in the end then were Wolves going down, Derby going down and Fulham going down as well. <laughs> oh my goodness, I've, I've totally lost my voice. Let's get to the end of the season. That was incredible. Oh my goodness, that has got to be one of the most incredible ends to a season I've had in FM history. I mean, we, we almost completely choked it at every single opportunity towards the end of the season. And then with virtually the final kick of the game on the final day, Julian Benker won it for us. So we'll do the end of season team meeting and we'll find out what budget we got for next season as well, plus the awards too. Um... What's our best 11 starting 11? Woodman in goal, back for a Meredith, Cooper, Hutchinson and Romeo. Wow, a lot of the old boys here. Ferguson, Tunnick of Wallace and Webster and Kuchar and Gregory. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, so we did the end of season awards first. Webster, player of the season, 70% of the votes. Not a real surprise because we didn't have a reliable, consistent goal scorer all season long. And Webster was our second highest scorer with nine this season, plus seven assists as well. He was fantastic. So I think I think the fans definitely got that one right. Uh, Omer got goal of the season. That's not a surprise. I showed you that one against Bolton. That was one of the best goals seen in FM history for, for me anyway let alone a goal of the season that was an incredible solo run Louise signed the season no doubt there and young player of the season West Rail. I think the fans got all those right normally the fans get like only one or two right for me but I think they got all those right there and as the season review scarce few pundits would have been brave enough to pluck Millwall from mid-table security in pre-season and mark them out for bigger and better things but the Lions did exactly that surprising everyone as they broke free from the pack and secured continental qualifications the Lions were one of the competition's feel-good stories defying expectations and only doing expressive spell of impressive spell of forms in February and April that saw them move to 8th place they were able to celebrate a job well done you know for the first time that's right normally they get it wrong the run of form which is the best of the season that was right February and April was our best run in the series when we went on that 10 game unbeaten run so well, I'm absolutely delighted with that. So the end of season team meeting, I'm going to say it to the boys. Uh, the season has finished now and it's time to focus on what we can achieve going forward. I think we can qualify for the Euro Cup next year. I need to come back for the pre-season with the same level of ambition. 
oh, a lot of people are saying that's a bit unrealistic. But we just did it, lads. We just... Oh, oh this is quite complicated. Now, half my players say that's good, but half my players say that's bad. Come on, guys, the boss is right. We can qualify for Euro Cup this time. Um... Okay, that'll do. Um, so, yeah. So, there we go, then. Uh, the last thing we'll do is take a look at the uh, the budget for next season in the Europa League. Oh, God, I'm I'm absolutely delighted, man, seriously. And, and Louise isn't happy that I failed to make a free kick taker. I thought I did. Oh, sorry, Louise. And, and Jordan's not happy as well that we didn't develop the club's young players, but we sort of did. And now he wants to leave with the early opportunity. Well, ready now is not happy. Oh, God, everything, like, everything's gone right and everything's going wrong. You've broken the promise you made to me when I joined the club. I want to transfer to a club with a manager I can trust. Oh, no, Louise. No, we love you, mate. Uh, I'm sorry. I can only apologize for that. I hope you can accept it and we can start rebuilding our working relationship from here. Um, yeah, this is your last chance. Any more broken promises in the world? Not Louise. I can't break any more promises. I love this guy. Jordan won't even listen to a talk. That's brilliant. Ready now, though, can go, though. I don't care. Um, what did he say? I'm extremely annoyed that you failed to play in my preferred role. I don't care. I don't care. You're on 75 grand a week and you barely scored this year. I don't care. I can't believe you got the audacity to bring this up again soon. I'll deal with it when I'm good and ready. I haven't got time to listen to your excuse. Oh, get out ready now. I've had enough. I've had enough. I've had enough. Where are we? Where are we? I'm going to have to let you go. Yeah, I'm going to have to let you go. He doesn't, he doesn't want to play for us. He's not even talking. He's left the room. He can leave the club. I don't care. Why have we still not got the EC there as well? We have qualified for the Europa League. Why have we, why have we not got that there? Why is that not there? Now I'm starting to worry we haven't qualified for the Europa League. I'm really, like, pessimistic now that we might well have not... Oh, God, now Benka, the, the Europa League guy that got us in there, is now backing Jordan who wants to leave. Oh, this is all going wrong. It's all going wrong. Oh, it's, it's going even bad for worse now. Already now he wants to stay at the club. No wonder he wants to stay. He's on 75 grand a week and he's barely scored this season. Oh, man. <laughs> have we even qualified for the Europa League? I don't even know now. I don't even know if we've done it because we've still not got the EC. The boys were saying that we hadn't qualified. I, have we made it? Where are the budgets as well? All right, Liverpool just beat Manchester United to the FA Cup final by winning it in extra time. But where is the budgets? This is really like confusing because normally the budgets come just a few days after the season. It's been a week now and we still haven't found out. Have I got... I, I bet I've gone past it, haven't I? I? I bet I've gone past it. Budget. Nope, haven't gone past it. Just haven't found it out yet. Where is it? Hmm. Sorry, I'm professional. Sign a cup of tea. Right, there we are. Uh, the budgets. So here we go then. Uh, our new budgets for the end of the season. Oh no. Liverpool miss out on a place in the 2024 Champions League despite securing top fourth position. Oh, I see. It's due to Oh, God almighty. For a minute there, I was thinking, oh, God, does that mean they're going to the Europa League and it would just be fourth, fifth, and sixth that make the Europa League? Is it? No. Surely not. No, thank God. Oh, wow, and that means that Watford go into the Europa League and Arsenal make the Champions League. Wow, I've never seen that before. So they missed out due to financial... I've never seen that. That's crazy. All right, well, it doesn't affect us, so I'm, I'm not too worried. But yeah, for a minute there, I was panicking like crazy. Here we go, initial budget for the new season. It shouldn't be much, to be fair, because we spent most of our budget last season. Well, I was wrong. £94 million for the next season. Absolutely fantastic. And in the end, there was a bit of a heart and mouth moment there. It's all good. And 94 million to transfer budget for next season as well. Wow. Take a deep breath, everyone. What a fantastic season finale that was. I can't wait for next year. We're definitely not spending all that because then we'll be in the red. We'll probably spend about half of that. But what an incredible end to the season that was. Drama from the first minute to the last. That's it. Miller in the Europa League. And I'm absolutely... So you know what? We could have finished an eighth. We would have made it. I'm just realising now that Benker goal has less significance because a point would have done it for us. Would it? Would it? Yeah, a point would have done it for us. So in the end, the Benka goal is less significant. But you know what? I don't care. It was still an amazing moment. And uh, we'll never forget it. So thank you very much for watching the season finale, guys. I really hope you have enjoyed it. What a thriller it was. And if you did enjoy today's episode, then please do drop a like. As likes are, of course, very much appreciated. And it really helps channel out as well. We shall see you for the next episode of the Football Manager series very soon. Hopefully tomorrow. Oh, what are these redos about, Jamesbury? Well, we'll have the start of the new season, Millwall in Europe for the first time. We'll probably have the Europa League qualifiers, plus a transfer special as well. And, um, oh my, if the season opener... Oh, God. If the season opener is anything like the season finale, we're in for a fantastic start to season eight. What an incredible finish that was. What a fantastic season it's been. Thanks for watching. Uh, much love to you all. And I will see you indeed for the first episode of the new season, the transfer special, and probably the Europa League qualifiers as well very soon. Bye.